application 11. It's going to be the last experiment for trimester 3. And again, this is about chemical kinetics. Now, in last experiment, we have determined the rate order of the reaction by collecting the gas that evolves outside of, uh, out of the reaction. However, today, we will be monitoring the concentration of the reactant from the color intensity. Our reaction for today is between crystal violet and it's called vi crystal violet because of the color that it gives in solution. With sodium hydroxide, the reaction between crystal violet and sodium hydroxide gives a product. Now, the product is colorless. So how can we monitor the variation on the concentration of the, uh, of the reactant from the color intensity? The color starts to fade when the concentration of the reactant starts to get less and less because the reactant concentration is going to, to, to decrease with time because it's getting consumed. Now, how can we monitor this change? We can monitor it by using a spectrophotometer. Now, a spectrophotometer will help us to measure the absorbance at certain time. Okay? So, before all this, we need to understand our reaction. There's two reactants, and therefore the rate might depend of both concentration. So, the concentration of Cb2 to Cb plus and the concentration of NaOH. And therefore, we have three unknowns to determine. We have the rate constant, we have the order in Cb+, and the order in OH. And this is going to make it more complicated. So in order to make the equation with less unknowns, so we can use the uh, one of the reactant in large excess. And in this case, we are going to use the sodium hydroxide in large excess. If you look at the concentration of Cb plus that you have, it's 25 micromolar, which means it's 25 times 10 to the power minus 6 molar. However, the solution of sodium hydroxide that you are going to use is 0.2 molar, which means that with time, or the change on the concentration of OH- is negligible. Okay? So what I can say, I can say that the concentration of OH- through the course of the reaction is remaining constant. And after that, I can say that the new constant rate now that I have, it's equal to the rate constant, initial one, multiplied by the concentration of OH-. And therefore, the rate expression it becomes way simpler. It becomes R is equal to K prime multiplied by the concentration of Cv plus to the order. Now, to monitor the concentration, I can measure the absorbance at different times. And later on, I can determine, I can, from the absorbance, using Beer-Lambert law, I can determine the concentration. But as you know, B. Lambert law is equal to molar absorptivity multiplied by the concentration multiplied by the, uh, the length of the path that the light will travel. So the length, I know it. The diameter of this tube is one centimeter. However, what I don't know is the molar absorptivity because it's not given. So. In order to convert the absorbance into concentration, I need to find the molar absorptivity. Now, to figure out the molar absorptivity, it's very simple. All what you need to do is to, have to build a calibration curve, which means that you measure the absorbance of solutions of, of known concentrations that you prepare yourself. Now, how can you prepare different solutions of non-concentrations? It's simply by taking the 25 micromolar solution, and you can do a series of dilutions. For example, you have the 25, then you can have the 20 micromolar, then the 15 micromolar, 
And you can do the calculation using M1 V1 is equal to M2 V2. It's enough to prepare three, four different concentrations. So you have the curve, you have three points, including the zero, zero point because the curve will pass from the center or origin. So you have four points and therefore you have your line. Now, how this is going to help you to determine the molar absorptivity? The slope of this line, it's equal to the molar absorptivity multiplied by the path length. And the path length, we said it's one centimeter. So from this, you can calculate the molar absorptivity. Now, once you have your molar absorptivity, you can convert your absorbance into concentration. And after that, you can have your graphs. When you find the concentration, variation of concentration versus time, this will enable you to figure out the order of the rate by drawing three graphs. Concentration versus time. If it's a straight line, this means that the order is zero order. Natural log of concentration versus time. If it's linear, this means that this is a first order. One over concentration versus time. If this is linear, this means it's a second order. So in order to construct these three curves, you need the concentration to track the constant variation of the concentration over time. And that's why we need to calculate the concentration. Now, this way we can determine the order in the rate order in CV plus. We still need to calculate the constant rate, K prime. Now once you figure out which graph is going to give you the straight line, the slope of the curve it's going to help you determine the K prime, which is the rate constant. Okay? But inside the rate constant, we said the K prime is equal to K multiplied by the concentration of OH minus to the power of its order. How can we determine the order in NaOH or OH minus? Now for this, you might not need to do it experimentally, but it's, it's good to know it because you might need to answer the question on how to design an experiment for this purpose. Now, if you fix, if you fix the concentration of CV+, and this time you change the concentration of OH-, okay? So you can do two trials. The trial that you did, first time and a second trial where you have different concentration of OH minus. You will end up having for each trial a, uh, uh, a different value of K prime. The reason it's that it's supposed to be constant but the reason is that you have now two different values of K prime because the concentration of OH minus is changing. So now you have K prime is equal to K multiplied to the concentration of by the concentration of OH minus. Now you have K prime 1 is equal to K, which doesn't change, multiplied by the concentration of OH minus 1, the first trial you did. And K prime 2 is equal to K multiplied by the concentration of OH minus 2. Okay? You cancel K and K, you end up having that the value of K prime 1 divided by value of K prime 2 is equal to the concentration of OH minus 1 to the power of its order divided by concentration of OH minus 2 to the power of its order. And then you do the math and you can get the order for the OH minus. We can see that again in the post lab discussion. So as you can see from the absorption spectrum of CV plus, the maximum wavelength is 590. So if we set the maximum wavelength of the spectrophotometer to 590, we might saturate the detector of the spectrophotometer because the, the solution is absorbing too much light. That's why we will set our spectrophotometer to another wavelength, slightly to the shoulder of the peak, where we know that CV plus will absorb enough light 
measure the absorbance. And at the same time, we don't saturate the spectrum, the detector of the spectrum. Okay, now, few remarks about what you need to do when you do your experiment is the spectrophotometer, you need to calibrate it. And in order to calibrate it, you will take your blank, okay, you will use 6 milliliter of water and 4 milliliter of sodium hydroxide, okay? The reason is that your reaction between CV plus, crystal violet, and sodium hydroxide, you will be using 6 milliliter of CV plus and 4 milliliter of an image. Okay? So for the blank, you substitute the CV plus by distilled water. Now, in these four tubes, you can prepare the dilute, diluted solutions. Okay? So you prepare 10 milliliter each, uh, every time. Okay? And I suppose you did the calculation before coming to the lab. Now, once you prepare your solutions, you can just measure the absorbance. And this is going to help you to determine the molar absorptivity from the calibration curve. Once you have the data for your calibration curve, you can start your experiment. Your experiment, you will put 6 milliliter of CV plus and then add to it 4 milliliter of sodium hydroxide. You shake the tube a little bit and quickly insert it to the spectrophotometer and start your timer because the reaction will start. Okay? Every 30 seconds, you will be taking the reading of the absorbance and write it down in the table, in the collection. Okay? Okay, so now that you have finished your experiment, you should have collected the values of absorbance for every concentration from the diluted solution that you have prepared. So say you have prepared, you have collected A, B, C, D, E. So then you take these values and you can construct a curve which is absorbance versus concentration. And as you can see that A it's the highest absorbance because it corresponds to the highest concentration and then E is the lowest absorbance because it's for the lowest concentration how this curve is going to help you so as you know Beer's law states that absorbance is equal to epsilon times L times concentration now L it's the path uh, length of our tube, which is one centimeter. Now, if you take the equation which is A versus C, which is the curve in here, the epsilon L, this is going to be the slope of the curve. As you can see in here, the slope is equal to epsilon times L, which is equal to delta A divided by delta C. Okay? So now that you have determined the slope, which is epsilon multiplied by L, from here you can determine epsilon, since L is equal to 1 and we know it. Now for the unit of epsilon, so epsilon multiplied by L, it's equal to absorbance divided by concentration. So that's 
in terms of unit, 1 because absorbance is unitless, divided by micromolar, which means that uh, epsilon times L, the unit is in micromolar minus 1. Now, if we divide by L here and by L here, we will have epsilon. The unit of epsilon is in micromolar minus 1. And because it's divided by centimeter, so it's going to be here multiplied by centimeter minus 1. So like this, you can determine epsilon, which is the molar absorptivity, and the unit. For the second table that you have, so you collected absorbance, so absorbance values at different times for the reaction, which is Cv plus, plus OH minus, it's going to give you Cv OH. Now, this will help you using the epsilon that you calculated before, it will help you to calculate the concentration. So now what you have, you have concentration versus time. To know the order of in uh, Cv plus, so the rate is equal to K prime, as we said, multiplied by the concentration of Cv plus to the power of W. Okay? To know how much W to determine it, you will need to construct three curves. The first one, concentration versus time. The second one, natural log of concentration versus time. And the third, 1 over concentration versus time. The graph that will be linear, this is going to help you determine the order of your rate. Okay? So that's how we can determine the rate order in the concentration of Cv+. Now what I was saying earlier about determining the concentration, the rate order for the OH minus, because remember R is equal to K prime. What did we say K prime is? It's equal to K multiplied by the concentration of OH minus to the power of Z. Now how can we determine K prime? It's the slope. Okay? It depends. So you can determine from the slope. Now, how can we determine Z? As I explained earlier, if you change the concentration of OH minus, so the, for the first trial, you can use OH minus 1, and for the second trial, you can use OH minus 2. So this is going to give you K prime 1, which is equal to K, which it doesn't change multiplied by the concentration of OH minus 1 to the power Z. And this is going to give you K prime 2, which is equal to K, multiplied by the concentration of OH minus 2 to the power Z. Now if you take K prime 1 divided by K prime 2, this is going to be equal to K multiplied by the concentration of OH minus 1 to the power z, k multiplied by to the uh, OH minus 2 to the power z. You cancel k, you know the values of k prime 1 and k prime 2, you know the values of OH minus 1 and OH minus 2, so you have one equation and one unknown. So from this, you can determine z. So after that, the rate of the reaction will be K multiplied by the concentration of Cv plus to the power W and concentration of OH minus to the power Z. You know K prime 1, you know OH minus 1, you know Z, you can calculate.